Hi everyone, this is Brian Gundy from For Goodness Snakes. And uh, your first glance is uh, looking at this video. You're probably thinking this is just a big bucket of morphs, and in, in many ways it is. Um, but the reason why I'm putting this video together is in response of a request from Nate at Sweet As Nate, uh, YouTube channel name. Um, Nate sent me a comment the other day, uh, making uh, basically asking what the heck is going on when he sees uh, het for this and het for that, and he's um, under the impression that you've you've already had to have proven, or you have to prove the hets out before you can actually call them hets or whatever. And so I'm just basically putting this uh, video together to sort of give you guys a a one on uh, basically genetics one on one one o one class on uh, basic genetics of ball pythons. So I thought we'd begin with the understanding or the definition of a dominant gene trait. A dominant gene trait is a morph such as a pinstripe, a spider, um, and at this point in time a desert. Desert would be considered a, a dominant gene trait at this time because we have no um, uh, proof that it's a codominant because it has not uh, proven a or produced a superform. Um, let's look at this particular animal here. This is a desert. Desert is a dominant gene trait. When you breed this snake to a normal, half of the babies will come out deserts, the other half will come out normals. The normals will not be heterozygous for anything because this is not a simple recessive gene trait. This is a dominant gene trait. Um, when you breed this to itself, it will not produce at this point in time it will not produce a super. And when I say not, not at this point in time, our hope is that eventually we can prove this out to be um, a co-dominant gene trait. But at this point in time, we're accepting this as a dominant gene trait. <clears throat> okay, so let's go to another, let's go to a co-dominant gene trait. Uh, a Mojave is a co-dominant gene trait. Here's a Mojave. A Lesser is a co-dominant gene trait. Here is a lesser. Now, when you breed a lesser to a normal, because it is a codominant gene trait, half of the babies will come, will hatch out normals that are not heterozygous for anything, and the other half will hatch out lessers. Same thing with a Mojave. Same thing with butter. Butter, excuse me. Now, when you breed two Mojaves together, you end up with what's called a super Mojave, and it's a blue-eyed Lucy or blue-eyed Lucistic, and we just call them uh, blue-eyed Lucies or Lucies. And this is a super Mojave. And as you guys can see, it has a little bit of a gray head to it. The super, Moha super lessers and super butters do not have that gray head. Okay, let's go to a simple recessive gene trait. This is a piebald. Piebalds are simple recessive gene traits, um, just as albinos are, clowns are, and caramels are. When you breed this to a normal, all of the babies are going to hatch out normals. And Nate, this is where you get, um, I guess, probably a little confused. Every baby that's produced from breeding a simple recessive morph to a normal are hets. Okay? You don't have to prove that they're hets because this is the proof. If this is the father of a breeding from a, a morph, a simple recessive morph to a normal, all the babies that are born from that clutch are hets. If you breed this back to a het, one out of two of its babies will come out, if it's a het for hot pied, come out pied. If you breed two hets together, one out of four babies will come out the morph, and 66% of all the normals that are left in the clutch will also be het for whatever that simple recessive morph is, whether it's clown, caramel, uh, albino, or pied. Uh, but because they're 66% het, you, not, you won't necessarily know which ones they are. So anyway, this is um, this. Now we're getting into a little bit of a different combination. This is what we call a designer morph. This is a bumblebee, and a bumblebee is a combination of a dominant and codominant gene trait. In that, the